So in going through this walk, you know, to me it seems like um, a modern day shaman, you know, where you help people move through to the other side. What are some of the perceptions that you may have that are unique to you in sort of being allowed to have this experience? Well, I was fortunate uh, because I've had very beautiful deaths that I've been involved in. My husband had a very beautiful death and I was with him um, every second mm -hmm. there at the hospital. Uh, I was in the bed with him, uh, with my father this summer. Um, it was a very beautiful uh, passing that he had. I, I was able to give him a foot massage the night before. We had no idea that it was going to be his time, but I gave him a foot massage with an oil called Sacred Mountain. Mm. And Sacred Mountain in the Native American um, tradition is the closest thing to heaven on earth. Mm. And so it was, it was quite meaningful that I got to, to do that with him. And um, his passing was very beautiful. Um, his actually, there was no one there. Uh, he, it was in his sleep, mm -hmm. um, but um, it was the leading up to it that we got to be involved in. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm just, I think with me having that as kind of my reference point, then I'm able to be with people uh, in a way that um, maybe someone that hasn't experienced it quite like that mm -hmm. is able to. Um, I love the fact I feel like I have, um, I'm able to bring, whether it's my clinical grade essential oils that I always use, or just a, a healing type touch, um, just the holding of the hand is, is one of the most important ones, uh, and maybe knowing when to let go of the hand, mm -hmm. uh, when it's time to let go. Mm -hmm. Do you feel, and have you witnessed, or have you studied the idea that, you know, sometimes we hear of people who are ready to go, but they hang on and hang on and hang on because someone in life in their, in their family can't bear the loss. Do you feel there's truth to that? Definitely. I think that uh, without going into a lot of kind of <laughs> negative type things, I think a lot of times people, families will hang on to their family members and maybe encourage them to go through treatments and things that um, are maybe more for them than it is for the patient. Right. And that's a little disturbing, you know, to be, to watch or to be a part of or to no, have no control over it, but to see it happening. At the same time, having a real compassion and understanding for why, you know, because you don't want to let go. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's being able to kind of be there for them too, and and you know hope that in the in the long run it's all okay. You know mm -hmm. that that the the person there understands that hey they just don't want to let go of them. Mm -hmm. When you work on people who are our elders, you know there's obviously there's a level of touch and there's a level of of um, care that's different in how you would handle their body as opposed to somebody who's you know. 20 and springing around. Uh, so as you work through these things, you know, what are your perceptions of the shifts of energy that happen in people? Well, um, number one, one of the challenge, challenges that I have is that a lot of the older adults are not familiar, as familiar with massage therapy and mm -hmm. calling it that. Mm -hmm. uh, they're used to having, you know, maybe their mom rubbing their shoulders or given a foot rub or something like that, but the, to actually call it massage therapy, uh, sometimes um, they, it's a kind of a put off or, or they're just unfamiliar with what it even means. And they get hung up on the therapy side of the idea? Um, I think more on the massage part. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> they're used to hearing a lot about therapy. Right. So a lot of times I'll call it foot therapy. Okay. And because most of the time I'm going to start with their feet if I have a choice. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason being that uh, a lot of times they suffer with neuropathy, fluid retention. Those are in, um, impactful in how they get around and mm -hmm. whether or not they're more prone to fall. And so one of my main focuses are um, fall prevention. So if I can get to working on the feet and the ankles,
ankles, and I'd normally work up to about the knee. Uh, that gives them a comfort level because they can keep their clothes on, mm -hmm. um, and it kind of gives us a way to, to kind of slowly introduce them uh, to the process. And then before long, sometimes they'll say, wow, my back's kind of bothering me. Would you mind working on my back or my shoulders? And so it's kind of a neat way to, to introduce massage to them. Mm -hmm. And the benefits for an older adult for having massage work? Oh, it's so amazing. Um, a lot of people talk about the fact that, you know, they are deprived of touch. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's a big factor, just that, just the touch part of it. But there's so much that can be uh, helped uh, with pain reduction, with their uh, depression. A lot of our older adults are depressed. You know, they're not able to do what they used to be able to do. Mm -hmm. uh, families have moved away. They're not maybe as connected. And lots of factors go into it. And so it can be um, uplifting. You know, you've got someone with focused attention on you. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very important to mention, uh, I took a class one time uh, in school from Beverly Bain, and I remember her uh, talking about the difference in handling someone and touching them. And there's very little difference in what it looks like to someone, but how it feels to the person is totally different. Mm -hmm. And so I always want to make sure that I'm touching them in a very meaningful and sacred way and not just handling them, getting them from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. I'd say that's a really great point, and I don't think I've ever quite heard it put that way. Uh, but I myself have been handled and by somebody that's supposed to be, you know, touching in the massage reality, and it does not feel good. When you have less of your own abilities, mm -hmm. then, you know, you can end up kind of feeling like a sack of potatoes that's just, you know, roll over here, move over here, you know. And there's just so, we, you know, I helped take care of my dad, me and my sisters, and we spent about eight years uh, helping with dad's care, and we learned a lot. And um, one of the things is, is simple of just explaining what you're going to do before you do it. Mm -hmm. Just like you do a child, you do that. And all of us, you know, really want that. I mean, we don't, we don't like a lot of surprises. Mm -hmm. And so just something that simple can make a big difference in, you know, whether they'll be willing to take a shower or not or, you know, be cooperative. A lot of that is just merely giving them that respect and honor and dignity, allow them to have their dignity, mm -hmm. you know, and that's one thing that I'm, we were very careful of with my father. Mm -hmm. And that's so important, and you're right, it is, um, I have older parents myself, and it is, it's interesting how they can be very childlike, you know, and, um, and it's, it's really beautiful in a way, actually, and it's also a, a, an awareness of a role change from child to caregiver, I guess would be correct. Um, is that accurate? Right, and their acceptance of that. Mm -hmm. And I think the more that we honor them and let them do everything they're able to do mm -hmm. and not in any way make them feel like a child um, in, in, a, in a, like a helpless way, mm -hmm. but um, honoring them, I think that goes such a long way um, in them being able to set, accept the help then that they do need. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not as resentful of it because they're, they are seen as still a whole person. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so important too, is just honoring that person because um, what we would do with Dad a lot of times is we had all kinds of pictures in the room of all different ages of him. And it reminded us that he's still the ball player you know, he was still the, the man that, in our eyes, could do anything and everything. You know, within that, that's still who he is. Mm -hmm. And so it was a good reminder 